Hey there, welcome to day 1,257 of my home tour of what she up to now. It's supposed to remind me that my granddaughter's coming, but I just got a message from her mom and she's not going to come today. She's got a cough and cold and was up half the night. Cough and cold and hacking. Like we all have been the better part of this year. I think there's a bug going around. Nothing to do with COVID or anything else, but just the traditional colds and viruses that go around. It has a cough associated with it this year and it seems like I don't know where it came from, but before I left in, when did I travel? June? I don't know. May. April. Whatever. whatever. End of, oh, end of April into May. Uh, I had a bit of a cough before I left, and then it seems like, I don't even know, one of my sisters did too, and then another sister got it, and then the grandkids got it, and it's gone around and around and around, and it just keeps morphing back between the families um, and our close-knit group, and it's, you know, it's... It's just one of those things that before COVID, we just took for granted. People got colds, people coughed, people sneezed, people uh, got them, got over it. We got over it because the, our bodies created antibodies. And so we get sick, we get better. So my granddaughter's got a little bit of a cough. Hopefully, I'm not going to get it. I'm gonna, I say knock wood, I'm not going to get it this time because I feel awesome right now and I don't I don't need to be sick. I don't I don't have time and energy, especially in the summer. I don't think there's anything worse than that summer cold. And I think I used to for a lot of years every year sometime I suspect going in and out of air conditioning is the culprit. I would get some kind of a little sniffly cold or bug or virus or something. My sisters would say it's allergies, but I like to believe I don't have any allergies because the allergies would slow me down. So today what am I working on? Now that I know my granddaughter's not coming, I have got a bunch of training things to catch up on, uh, a bunch of uh, activities and things that I've been kind of piling up. If you were to look to my left, you'd see I've got at least a one foot pile here to deal with. I've got some other everyday life type things to do, but working on, and I want to, I haven't started yet, but I want to go ahead and highlight and plan out a little bit more or just Go back and look at the previous and get some ideas for what I liked, what I didn't like of the previous Get Up and Go Challenge. We're going to August 1st do the next free 30-day Get Up and Go Challenge. I haven't done it since April because I was traveling. So I did it April into the 1st of May and then June, July have been and will continue to be summer months here in Wisconsin. So a lot going on with family and friends and holidays and transitions in different aspects and areas of our lives so took a break from the get up and go challenge and I gotta tell you I really miss it I miss doing it every day I think it's as good for me as it is for the people that participate in it in that it keeps me going it gives me a focal point and a purpose of how I can contribute how I can share some of the cool tools and lessons that I've learned over my many many years here on the planet I say 47 years in business, it's probably more like 48. It depends what what you use as your benchmark for starting your business. I started my first business when I was 13, making ice. Ice cubes, yes, the cold frozen water stuff. Um, and have done a lot of things since then, at least 27 different businesses and industries. Offline, I was involved in. And I, I have a, I've actually lost count of the different things that I've done online. Lots of different things. Lots of trial and error. Lots of figuring it out. Lots of wrong roads. You know, you can only say it's the wrong road after you discover you're on the wrong road and you turn around or take a different path or, or go in a different direction. So when I was in, you know, pursuing them, of course, I didn't think they were the wrong road. But I realized they're the right road for some people. But the right road for some people isn't the right road for everybody, and it's certainly not the right road for me. But a lot of times we can't figure that out until we actually take action toward discovering, is this the right road for me? And sometimes it just takes a couple of tweaks, and we take what we think is the wrong road, and we turn it into the best opportunity, the best thing that we've ever done. So we have to be open to uh, figuring that out. Our idiom for today for Supersize Your Business was the powers that be. And of course, it's got a religious um, underpinning and beginning in that um, God is considered the power that is. God is the I am or whatever, all that. But uh, there's a lot of tie-in to our businesses and to our lives by how we approach this concept of the powers that be. Do we 
believe that there is something outside of us that is controlling us and controlling our life and responsible for our actions and direction of our life? Or do we take on that control and responsibility and belief that it's up to us, yet there's all these things that are possible, but it's up to us to pick and choose and create the life we want based on the possibilities that we choose to participate in. So I think it's a, a really, I think it's a great idiom. I think it's got a lot of tie-ins and lessons to our businesses and to our lives. And so it was a fun one to cover. Um, and all I did was I shared about how do you use the powers that be to supersize and grow your business. And I just gave a couple of examples of that. Our do one thing every day that centers you are all about you 365 day challenge today was about what do you think of yourself? Um, and it's not so important what anyone or anything outside of you thinks of you as it is what you think of yourself. And I think it takes a lot of us different uh, paths and roads and times and, and levels of experience to actually figure this out. And I, and I honestly believe that there's a whole lot of people on the planet and that have lived and will continue to live that, that may never figure this out. They may never realize or come to the conscious realization that what they think of themselves is far more important than what anyone else or the world or anything judges or thinks of them. Uh, I think all of us have had experiences with peer pressure, with outside forces influencing us. I, I think back now and I'm like, I just shake my head sometimes at how I was molded and controlled by other people in the past and and I gave them permission to do that I let them do that uh, and it's it's an interesting and sad realization when I think of years that I spent doing things that didn't make me or some of the people in my life very happy because I thought it was what was expected of me and I wanted to you know be the good daughter the good wife the good mom the good everything which can still be a good everything that you want to be and be in alignment and can true and consistent with your goals and objectives and what you really want to create in your life. And I think that I believed for a long time that that wasn't possible, that, yeah, I wanted these things in my life, these these ideals, these lofty things. Everybody just wants to be happy. I think everybody just wants to be happy, right? I don't know a single person that if you ask them what they want, they wouldn't say that they wanted to be happy or have a life that and experiences that feel good to them and right to them. But along the way, and, and I think it's all just a maturing and learning thing, and it depends on our experiences, whether we'll realize that or, or wake up to that or not. I, I know a lot of um, people and a lot of really successful business people that are guided nearly 100% by outside uh, recognition and acknowledgement and rewards and things that really, really matter to them. And it works for them. But I also think we see a lot of people that look like they are at the pinnacle of success that are absolutely positively miserable and unhappy, don't feel fulfilled or achieved, and are actually depressed and suicidal even though they, they look to the outside world like they should be on top of the world. And so there's this whole spectrum of that. So I say choose how you think of yourself and realize the incredible impact that that has on you and make sure that when you're choosing because we get to choose how we view ourselves choose things that create what you want in your life choose to see yourself as the the beer and doer and have an achiever of those things that you want in your life and watch how quickly and easily those things start to come into your life as if by magic even though you're doing things and taking actions to, to make those things happen in your life. Give yourself a little credit, <laughs> right? Oh, I just got lucky. No, no, you didn't. You worked for 25 years to create the business that you've created. You didn't get lucky. You worked hard. Whenever there were ups and downs, you, you figured it out. You chose not to quit. You continue to persevere and be consistent and show up and serve people. That doesn't happen by accident, right? I'm on a tangent. All right, I'm going to go figure out my technology challenges. I've got a couple technological challenges that have been plaguing me for about a week and a half. Now, with 4th of July and a bunch of company and things around and relatives in town, didn't get to troubleshooting a couple things that have changed in one of the platforms I use every day, Facebook, Facebook Live, thank you very much, and pages. And uh, for some reason, I have on one of my pages where I do the 
annual challenge, of course, in the, in the middle of the year, this happens. And you know what? Something like this happens every year that I've done an annual challenge. Technology changes, things change, you know, computers crash, updates happen that cause it and make it possible, that make it require that you do things differently than you've done them just the day before. And I ran into that uh, last week and I've been actually downloading the videos every day from this because it's not consistent. Some days they'll download on the Facebook page that I do it on, and my Sharon Horn Elstrom page, as a an MP4, which is exactly what they're supposed to do, a, a video file format, right? And then some days, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I have no idea why, they're downloading as a JPG file. Well, guess what? A JPG, a JPEG file is not a video file, and so I can't process them the way I normally do in terms of disseminating and sharing them across other platforms. Super frustrating. I will figure it out. I started to figure it out. I've been downloading them to my phone so I can access them, but I don't know on my phone how to transfer them from my phone. I tried to send them to my Google Drive. They didn't go, etc., etc., ad nauseum, but I know I'll figure it out, but I'm dealing with figuring that out. And guess what? That's one of those things that changes all the time. It's something outside of us, and early on, it used to frustrate me, and now I just take a deep breath and I'm like I don't know how many days it's going to take me to figure it out but I know at some point it'll click everything will fall into place and I'll figure it out so I'm gonna go figure that out today since I don't have my granddaughter and then I will see what other projects and things I'm gonna work on if I can help you in any way if you have any questions hit me up in the comments below I think you can direct message me right off this video otherwise I'll be with you tomorrow to just let you know what am I doing as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online business and a little bit back and forth in 2021 and beyond have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, see you tomorrow.